My name is Maria Los Peña Claros. I am the current president of the ATBC and I'm ba I work in Wageningen University in the Netherlands. But I always have to say that I'm uh, originally from Bolivia. The ATBC is an international association that aims to bring together tropical biologists from all the world that are working in the tropics, obviously, uh, on issues related to basic biology, but also working on conservation issues. So it, it's really aiming to, um, to use the basic idea is to have all the, to use the information coming from research to, um, and, and provide that information to policy makers to make a difference in the, in the way that our tropical forests are being conserved. So that's, uh, but I will say, it, I think it's also the largest um, organization in the world in terms of the largest organization for tropical biologists. Yeah. And we have members from many different countries, although the uh, there is a lot of, I think a big part of our membership is nowadays is still based on the, is in the Americas, so in the, sta in the United States um, and in other Latin American countries, but, um, but we see an increase in memberships over the last 10 years also for Europe, uh, Asia and, and Africa. Uh, but we are all, and, but we are always trying to get more members from more tropical uh, regions and that's one of the aims as well of the organizations to really become much more representative of, of those regions as well. Yeah, I, um, I, the first meeting I went to, the, the first meeting of the ATBC uh, in which I participated in was back in 1996 when I was finishing up my MSc was uh, in Rhode Island in, uh, in the States and I was really fascinated by, uh, by the meeting. At that time the meeting was still, uh, the, our meetings were still in collaboration with other larger societies, in this case was the ESA, the Ecological Society of America. Uh, but when I was about to finish my PhD I, I started to go back as well uh, to, to go to the meetings as well and I, I think I have been not in all, but in many, in many of the meetings, and, and as I be, became a much more frequent visitor of uh, assistant of the meet, of the meeting, I started be, become also much more engaged in the activities that the ATBC was doing. So I, um, at a given moment, I was invited to to participate as a council member, um, for which I served two, three years. And then um, at that time I was starting to publish a lot of things, I'd be much more active also in terms of research, so I was invited to be part of the editorial board of Biotropica. And in that function I think I was from 2007 to 2016 related to the editorial board in two different, uh, two different functions. So I have been really, ATBC has really been for me a, a very important source of uh, of um, networking, of getting to know what the other people are doing and to receive a lot of information in a very short period of time. And also to, to meet amazing people that are doing really very interesting research, but they are also very open and very friendly and are eager to discuss and eager to, to interact with young people, with uh, old people. And I see that that is one of the most appealing things for me of the ATBC because I have been in other meetings and sometimes the other, other meetings are for me too large or are too less focused on the tropics or, or, peop, or I feel a very large distance with the people that are attending this meeting and that makes me feel a bit maybe insecure or a bit not feeling that easy to go at, at easy to go and talk with people and I, I get a, a completely different feeling when I come to the ATVC, you know, and uh, yeah, tropical biologists are, are great people, you know, are friendly people, so they are easy to communicate with them. And now, uh, well, this last, last year and, and until the end of next year, I will be part of the, of the board as president, but in, with different functions. Huh? With, Uh, we just uh, had this uh, very nice panel discussion about uh, Beyond Paradise 
And one of the things that we were discussing was the different roles that uh, biologists are expected to have. And I think um, the panelists, and to, I don't think it was the intention, but I think the idea that, people, that uh, younger researchers have received is that they need to excel in, in the science they are doing, they need to excel in communication, they need to com collaborate with other researchers, but they also need to pass their research results to uh, community members, to stakeholders, to police ma policy makers. So it seems a very huge task that you need to do. And um, so I have been talking with some people and people have been asking me, how do you get out of your comfort zone? How do you manage to achieve all of that? And I think that what I wanted to say, or I wish it would have been stressed much more, is that it's also, uh, you don't need to start doing that from the beginning of your career. I think that you get um, your role in your, uh, the role of you as a researcher will change through time. So at the beginning, probably the role that, that the students need to take is to, to become the best research in their field as, as good as they can and to learn and have the tools to do, th to do things. And as you, the time progresses, it may be that you will get yeah, involved in more conservation issues and you will be invited to discuss about the conservation related problems and then that's the kind of thing that will come as well with experience, with wise uh, gray hair, uh, with wisdom and, and gray hair. Um, but I also think what is important is that maybe uh, one way to, to get out of this comfort zone as well is to, to talk with other people, to talk to the practitioners, you know, and to, to sort of set a step back and think, okay, this is the research that I'm doing, what is the implications that it has for conservation or for management. And let's talk with people that are doing that type of research. In that way, you influence the other without needing to do the research yourself. And they can influence you as well in the ways that you phrase your questions. So you, I don't think that you, we need to do it all, but we just need to be open to, to see a bit farther of a bit farther to the research that, that we are doing. And I think that that, that will be fine. So I think one way to go is just influence your peers influence people that are doing much more applied research and talk and come to meetings and uh, interact and you know. But I have to also say that young researchers sometimes are doing already so much more than what I did when I finished up my PhD. I, I have a couple of examples. One was mentioned already, Katarina Jakovac, but also Andre Junqueira. Um, these are P Brazilian PhD students that have really taken the effort to translate the research, research results into something that is uh, f uh, much more understandable for communities. And they, they went back to the places where they have been living, uh, they have been working, and they uh, had discussions with the communities and discussed, well, you know, these are the results that we are finding, and this is the way that you want maybe to change things. And people, and the community members, they were very excited to see them back because, you know, they, uh, they were, uh, they were, um, yeah, people like them as well, obviously, so you see the person back and it was also nice for the community members to see the product of the hard work and to share experiences with them. So I think there are many different ways of doing that and, uh, and, and young researchers can be really much more creative than, than, than I was when I was doing my PhD, you know. I, I did my PhD, I didn't go back to the communities and provided the results, you know, but I think there is this interest nowadays much more than it was before. Join the ATVC. It's a fantastic place to interact, to talk, to learn, to get inspired and, uh, and to make um, friendships and to make uh, partnerships for the rest of your life. So join the ATVC.